In this video, we're going to take everything that we recorded in Unity and bring it into Maya and bind it to our HIK rig using industry standard motion capture animation techniques. Once we've completed that, we can move into creating some animation layers and starting to tweak the animation so that we can make it look a whole lot better. So let's reference our rig. Dear Girl Rig published. Reference that in. Okay, great. There she is. And let's bring in the file import. And we'll bring in our animation from the scene tracker. Scene track exports. Let's take in take three. Great. So we got our double transforms as we expect. We'll get, we can get rid of this stuff. I'm going to delete the ground for now. It's just a bit distracting. I just wanted to show you that you could bring it in. All right, and let's take the um, the skin out of the Dear Girls Root Transform so everything works there. In fact, let's just delete the skin. I don't even want the skin. I don't know why I kept it. So there we go. We have our skeleton. And let's just go here really quick on our main character and grab her definition. So let's make sure the D Dear Girl Rig is pu uh, published is selected. So Dear Girl rig published rig is selected and not our game rig. And let's go to the definition and we will save that definition. I'm going to call this Dear Girl HIK rig. Okay, and we'll just go okay. So now what we can do is let's select the game character's rig. Oh, actually, now what we need to do is we need to make a new character. Okay, and let's just uh, let's rename that character. Dear girl, Unity. There she is. She doesn't have a definition yet, but instead of defining it manually, which we could do, let's just hide this for a sec. We could manually define all of this stuff um, just by selecting these joints and assigning them and going through the thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to load the one I just made. So there she is. Bring it in. Okay, so it missed the legs, but that's no problem. We'll just assign and go through and assign our selected bones. No problem there. And let's go in here. Uh, assign. Assign. Okay, great. We'll go up. Let's do this one. Down. We'll go here and assign. And assign. Okay. Let's do the other leg. Assign. And go down. Assign. You can get pretty quick at this once you've done it a few times. Go here and assign and assign. Great. She's ready to go. Perfect. Okay. Everything's there. There's no root. Great. So now what we can do is let's take the, um, let's go back to Dear Girl Unity is all set up. We've got a check of approval. It's going to get messy once she moves because it's going to say you're out of whack, but it's all good. Okay. So let's go back to the, the main girl rig. We can hide this one away for now. Unhide her, Shift H, Control H. But now let's just say we don't want to use the control rig. We want to actually use the Dear Girl Rig Unity. Okay, so we have an offset problem. Not really that big of a deal. All we have to do is go to the definition and click here and go to Edit HIK Properties. And you can turn Match Source on. Okay. Now I still have a problem here with the uh, ankle height. So we just turn this off. And now she tracks properly. She's matching. But you will see those arms are twisting up into all kinds of a mess. So what we want to do is we can detach those roll joints. The roll joints always give me grief. Uh, maybe somebody knows how to manage them better. I do not know how to manage the roll joints. I can't seem to get them to work. There are properties that you can modify on how they're supposed to work. I just find they end up all over the place. So I'm going to just break those connections for now. I like to break them and then just zero them out and make my own um, that is based on something a little more reliable than what's happening in there. And, I, and that's just me. I'm sure there's a way to do it properly. I do not know how to do it properly. And I have not had the time to figure it out. Once I figure that out, I will let you know. But there's probably a really easy thing that I'm missing that everybody else knows that I don't know. Zero those out. If you if you can, if you can hit the if you can hit the joints properly. You can select them all like that. And as long as you're in the channel box, you can do this to all of them and they should work. There you go. Just 
break the connections, bop, and zero them out. Wonderful. All right, so the next thing we want to do is so we have this rig being driven around, but the there's one thing I want to do before we get too crazy here, before we start baking stuff. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, I'll show you really quickly. Let's just double check and make sure the animation's holding together. Okay, she runs around. Wonderful. Sits down. Great. Gets up. Okay, great. So there she goes, and she sits and stands up. The last thing I want to do is I want to get her skeleton out of this. I do not want to grab this root motion. If I bake this root motion into this character, we're going to have all kinds of difficulty um, modifying these hips, as the hips will have a rotation and position value that falls into the global space. They're going to have a massive value, and as soon as you try to do something with her hips or change the way she's standing, it's going to break the animation on how she's positioned and everything's going to go weird on you. So what I like to do, because we did game animation, I can take this character out right here and put it here. So now we don't have root animation. So when I go to my control character here, which is the rig published girl, and I go to bake, and I'm going to bake to the rig, and usually if we set reset to defaults, Everything's fine. I just don't keep unbaked keys because we have 60 FPS baked in there. So let's go bake. Great. So you can see she moved weird all over the place. But now what we have is we have her body all baked in there. But let's check out her values. Her values are nice and low on all her rotations, on her hips, on everything. On her hand positions, the rotation values are low, and they're manageable. If she's moving around all over the world, these numbers can get massive, especially on the IK solving stuff. So now what we can do that she's all baked in there is we can take the HIK, this guy here, and we can just, we can bake it down as well. We can duplicate it. So maybe we'll go duplicate special here. And I want to, let's just reset this so you can see what you do. Uh, I'm going to duplicate input graph because I'm going to grab the animation. So I'll go apply. And I'm going to use this guy outside of everything as the dear girl's root animation. Where did it go? Great. So this has animation on it, but first, before we stick her back onto it, what we can do is just go to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and I want to just clean this up a little bit because right now there's a billion keys in there. There's 60 FPS of keys. So let's just go to Curves, Bake, Channel, and we can reset this. And we're going to keep it on sample rate by one, and I'm going to get rid of Keep on Bake Keys. Bam. Now the whole thing's on ones on as we would need. And we can now take the girl character here and we can take her root position if we want to. And let's take this and we'll select this and we will go to this this is the, probably one of the easier ways to do it. We will do a parent constraint, maintain offset and apply. And now we can modify that and animate it separately if we want to. If you want to change your hips now, you're changing your hips inside of these small values. And if I keyframe, like so if I create, let's go to the channel editor, let's go to the channel box, and we'll add a new animation layer. Let's select her first, and we'll just select her whole character and create a new animation layer. So I'm just going to we'll go back to the start. We'll add a new animation layer based on those, that selection. What happens if you don't if you don't have her root motion keyed out sitting outside of this? If I keyframe this position at all, it's going to break all her movement because it's going to be thinking, well, this value is supposed to be 100 and whatever. This rotation value should be something more like 180 because she's turned 180 degrees from where she was before. So that rotation value on her hips is 180. It's just, it's just a big mess. And if I do anything, if I were to keyframe her position of her hips even, it's going to mess up the whole thing. 
It'll mess up how high she jumps. It'll mess up everything. So right now, if I do it, we'll go here. And if I were to, let's just press Shift, uh, we'll, we'll key here, Shift W. And let's keyframe here, and then maybe on her jump. I'm just going to speed this up because I don't want to spend too much time on how to tweak the animation. It's pretty straightforward. There are some tutorials online. However, I would say there are too few. So it is something I'll be focusing on is the process for polishing the kind of animation we get out of a game engine. But this pretty much covers how you can do something in Unity really quickly, pull it out, and get it on your character rigs as quickly as possible. There's an additional method that you can check out on the Autodesk Learning Channel on YouTube that will show you how to use the same motion capture technique on a custom rig with custom controllers so that you're not stuck using the HIK interface. So in the next couple of videos, we'll get into using some other third-party plugins for Unity to start animating your characters in different ways.